Happy 4th of July to all you Americans out there, all you patriots that celebrate, and happy 4th of July to all you non-patriots, you non-Americans that wish you could celebrate it. Hoorah, motherfuckers. We are America, second to none, and we own the finish line. I thought about doing a special video for the 4th of July, but... I didn't really know what to do, so instead we're going to review The Bear Season 3, because of course we have the brand new season of The Bear. It just came out about a week ago, I finally finished it, it took me a little bit longer than I thought it would. So I want to talk about it a little bit quickly here, and as you see by the title, I believe this season was a step down. But I did clickbait you a little bit, because although it's a step down, it's still a damn good season of television. Let me get into it. So The Bear Season 3 picks off where The Bear Season 2 left off. If you hadn't watched The Bear Season 1 or 2, spoiler alert for those two seasons, the whole point of that show is that there is the sandwich shop that this guy, played by Jeremy Allen White, has to take over after his brother commits suicide. In the second season, he's turning that sandwich shop into like a fine dining restaurant, and we follow all the different characters in the show as they go through their journey to becoming better at working in a fine dining restaurant, because a lot of them are just like random assholes. At the end of Season 2, Jeremy Allen White opened the restaurant finally, and there was a lot of problems within the restaurant on the first night, just a lot of drama trauma, a lot of dr just a lot of drama, a lot of different scenarios. He ended up with Carmi, who's Jeremy Allen White's character, breaking up with his girlfriend. And now we have this new season where we have to deal with them working in this restaurant. And the whole point of the season is just kind of watching these characters live in the situation that they're in and just kind of to kind of wait to see what happens with this restaurant. The whole one of the big plot points of the season is that they're waiting to get a review for the restaurant, a major review from the Chicago Tribune, which is a big, big thing for the restaurant, whether it's going to succeed moving forward, whether people are going to go eat there moving forward. There's also a storyline with Ayo Edabiri's character where is she going to stay there? Is she going to cook there because there's so much drama there and is the trauma that she's kind of experiencing by working there this kind of evil not evil but kind of angriness that Carmi, played by Jeremy Allen White, kind of puts her and a lot of the other characters through. Is it worth it to actually being a great chef? It's kind of like turning into this Whiplash scenario, where if you've seen Whiplash, you obviously know that uh, J.K. Simmons' character in that film, his ideology is if I'm angry and mean to these people and bully them, you know, a lot of them are going to quit, a lot of them are going to feel like they've been traumatized, but the one or two that make it through and they stick by it are going to be better off for it, and we have a chance of creating something really special. This show and this season's kind of delving into that. The main issue with this season, though, is it just kind of all feels like a filler season. It all feels like filler. The season doesn't feel like it goes anywhere. It doesn't feel like it really progresses the story all that much, and it just feels like one long epilogue to season two and one long prologue to season four, a season that I expect to be bigger than this. A season they've already filmed and that we might be getting relatively soon, hopefully, because that's the season that I feel like is going to have the payoffs and the satisfying conclusions of some of these story arcs that we've started. But what does this season do right? Well, the first thing is, and it's the biggest strength of the bear, is the characters. The characters in this show are what make it so entertaining. At the core of the show, it is a comedy. It is a comedy that depicts what cooking in a restaurant is really like, especially fine dining. It's controlled chaos, which is what a kitchen is, and it takes that controlled chaos with great dialogue and great characters and great performances, and it makes you laugh and also just get emotionally engaged and invested in these characters. This is the funniest season of the show so far, I think. It's absolutely hilarious. We get a lot more of Maddie Matheson, who's been in the other seasons, but I feel like there was a lot more of him here, and he is just so funny and so good at comedy, and everything with him and his brother in this, in this season was just absolutely great. Carmi, I feel like, uh, was my least favorite character this season. I, I feel like the whole stick of him just being this emotional wreck and being kind of the mysterious anime guy almost is getting a little old and I'm hoping in season four there's a little bit more of growth with his character, a little bit more of a transformation into something else that we kind of started seeing in season two because yet again, this whole mysterious anime guy thing is kind of... It gets old. Ayo Adabiri, though, her character is absolutely great. She is still amazing, and I love the arc she's going through. I'm excited where, to see where it leaves off. One thing I loved about Season 2 is Season 2 just kept on surprising the audience with its cameos. It had this thing where almost every episode, you had no idea who was going to show up. You could have a multi-time Oscar winner, a multi-time Oscar nominee, a very famous actor. They just kept showing up left and right during that season, and when they did show up, they did two things. They stole the show, you know, giving an incredible performance, but they also left enough room to feel like they weren't over shadowing the actual full-time cast members. For example, the Christmas episode where you have all these people come in was absolutely excellent and mind-blowing. Jamie Lee Curtis stole the entire season with that one episode while also advancing and kind of improving on the characters that actually exist. There's not a lot of that in this season. There are moments, and those moments where some characters come in are highlights, but you really just kind of get characters kind of regurgitated from the previous season, and it does work very well when it's there, but it's just I was kind of expecting there to be more fun cameos, just not expecting who's going to show up. And there are one or two. There's one in particular that I know people are going to be talking about that obviously when you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. That one was great, but it was not, there wasn't enough of it. But that was a little bit disappointing. This, this season also doesn't have a standout episode in the sense that the first season had that one episode that was shot to look like it was one take. The second season had the Christmas episode. 
this season, there's not really one of one episode that feels like it was trying to do something really special and try to be the big episode of the series. It all just kind of felt like it blended into each other. The first episode was a little bit unique. I was not a fan with what they did with the first episode, but I know a lot of people were. There's one episode with T where we follow kind of like her backstory and how she got to working at Beef at the sandwich shop. And there's a great, great sequence in that episode with her and John Bernthal that I thought was absolutely brilliant. One of the best written scenes of the whole show. That episode was my favorite episode of the season. I thought it was excellent. There is also an episode where Jamie Lee Curtis comes back in and she yet again proves why she deserved to win an Oscar. Just not for everything ever all at once, but she is incredible and unbelievable in the one episode that she has this season. I also thought the finale of this season was great. It's not as explosive and chaotic as the, uh, you know, the last couple finales have been, but it is still really, really good and it leads us into a decent direction. It's almost like a reflection episode where we reflect on a lot of the themes that the show is trying to engage with and we, we get to experience kind of what something, what running a fine dining restaurant is in the eyes of other people that are kind of side characters in the show and it's really good and really well done. But when the season ended I just kind of felt like nah like I felt unsatisfied I felt like I just watched 10 episodes and I didn't really get a conclusion to any of the things they set up it felt like a setup season a filler season and because of that I understand why some people are kind of souring on this season of the show I see that the audience reaction is definitely not as positive as the critic reaction or the reaction of the previous seasons and I kind of understand why watching this this is an unsatisfying season of television it just is it's fun and it does everything the bear does really great but it feels like a part one and when I when you when you call and when you call this season season three not season three part one you call it season three and the first two seasons felt like complete packages then you're expecting this season to feel like a complete package that leaves room open for season four. Instead, this feels very clearly like a part one to a two-season thing that we have now have to wait for. And like I said, it's already filmed, I believe, so I don't think we're gonna have to wait till next June to see The Bear Season 4. I'm hoping maybe we could see it later this year. That would be incredible. But yeah, we have to wait for it. And because of that, we're just left here unsatisfied by the last few episodes of the season. And that kind of sucks. But overall, I still had a really good time with The Bear Season 3. I think this is still easily one of, if not the best show on TV. I feel like Succession held that crown for quite a few years. And with Succession gone, it's like an open boxing match between The Bear and House of the Dragon. Which show is the best? Which is number one? And to be honest, I really don't know. We'll wait for the end of House of the Dragon and then I will make a video talking about it. But The Bear is in that conversation. This season is still really, really great. I just think it's a little bit of a step down and it feels a little bit fillery. But I will give The Bear Season 3 a 4 out of 5. It is great. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great 4th of July. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe for more. I upload every single day. See you guys in the next video.